Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, Jeremiah chapter 15, beginning in verse 5. So God has pronounced judgment on the Israelites after warning them many, many times, and he's not going to change his mind. That's what chapter 15 is about. We'll get there in just a second. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Bring your Bible, a hunger for God's Word. Go there, choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through every single verse of the Bible. This is the fifth with the New Testament completed already. All there for you. Again, that's at thebibleversebyverse.com. And Father, we pray... <clears throat> that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll begin our study in verse 5 of Jeremiah 15, but I want to begin reading in verse 1. Then said the Lord unto me, <clears throat> Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not turn toward this people. Cast them out of my sight, and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto you, Where shall we go forth? Then you shall tell them, Thus says the Lord, Such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. And I will appoint over them four kinds, says the Lord. This is what's coming to God's Old Testament people because of their sin. The sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heavens and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. And I will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. For who shall have pity upon you, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan you? Or who shall go aside to ask how you do? You have forsaken me, says the Lord. You are gone backward. Therefore I will stretch out my hand against you and destroy you. I am weary of relenting. God is sick of it. He's, he's tired. He has grown tired, as it were, humanly speaking, and it's a language that we can understand. He's grown weary of relenting, of holding back his wrath. He's given them more than enough time. God says, get them away from me. God never, you know, <clears throat> God will never say, get away from me. Unless somebody has first turned their back on him. And they have a settled conviction that they're never going to change. Then God will say, get away from me. God never walks away from anyone. He said it's the people who walk away from him. And God lets him go too because he honors our free will. So don't blame God for burning in hell because you are the one who turned away from him and has rejected his son and the mercy and the salvation that he purchased through his horrible death on the cross. Don't you blame God for going to hell. Don't you blame God for sending anybody to hell. It's not his fault. He's done everything to make it possible for people to avoid hell. I don't feel sorry <clears throat> for a single soul who is burning in hell. They are getting exactly what they deserve. And by feeling sorry for them, it seems to suggest that God is unfair. No, sir. They deserve it. After all that God has done, after all they have done to God and all he did for them, mm-mm. 
God can put up with a lot of sin. But here he told his people, no more. I'm sick of it. I'm finished. So get them out of here. See, God will receive anybody who repents and receives Christ as Lord and Savior. He's not picky. At the same time, he's not going to force himself on anyone. If somebody doesn't want him in their life, well, he's not going to force himself on them. <clears throat> That's up to them. Seven. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. This is the key. This is the key. Everybody sins, including those of us who love Jesus. But the difference <clears throat> is that those who love Jesus feel horrible after they sin. And so they repent, and they confess, and they turn back to God. It's the people who work at iniquity. Those are the ones who go to hell. They're the ones who don't repent. They don't ask for forgiveness. They don't seek mercy through Jesus Christ. They're the ones who go to hell. It's not just the ones who sin because we all sin. See, God will forgive even the worst sinners who truly repent, but his people in Jeremiah's day, refused to change their ways. So they were just asking for trouble, and that's what they got. Verse 8. <clears throat> Their widows are increased to me above the sand of the seas. I have brought upon them against the mother of the young men a destroyer at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly the terrors and terrors upon the city. <clears throat> there were a lot of widows in Jeremiah's day, which means that there were a lot of dead men. And it also meant a lot of big trouble for a lot of children and women that they left behind because they had no one to support them, to take care of them. When a man was dead, you're a woman, you're a child, you're out of luck. Nine. She that has borne seven languishes, she has breathed her last. Her son has gone down, down while it was yet day. She has been ashamed and confounded, and the rest of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemies, says the Lord. Seven actually is symbolic in scripture, of many. Simply means many. So Judah, which once had many prosperous people when they were obedient to God, especially in the days of Solomon, will become small and weak because of their sin. If God can't get our attention during good times, he will get our attention during bad times. But some people are so far gone that it doesn't matter. They're not interested. Ten, woe, woe is me, my mother, that you have borne me a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. I have neither lent for interest nor men have lent to me for interest, yet every one of them does curse me. The Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with your remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat you well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. You know that it's bad when you say, I wish I had never been born. Of course, people in hell say that. I wish I had never been born. The horror that 
people are experiencing in hell is so terrible that it completely drowns out any memories of any good times that they might have had during their life, and they're going to wish that they had never been born. They, they don't wish that they had repented and received Christ as Lord and Savior because they hate God and they hate righteousness, but they sure wish they were never born. Most people who die today, 100,000 on average across the world, most of those 100,000, the vast, vast majority of them, will go to hell. And they will regret that they were ever born. Again, they won't regret that they never repented because they hate God and they hate righteousness and they love their sin. But they'll regret not, they'll regret that they were ever born. And God is telling Jeremiah that he's going to be okay, though. Jeremiah is going to be okay. God says that all these bad things are going to happen to his people who have refused to repent, but he's going to make an exception with Jeremiah because the Bible says that God knows those who belong to him. 12. Can anyone break iron, the northern iron and the bronze? Your wealth and your treasures will I give as plunder without price, and that for all your sins, even in all your borders. And I will make you to pass with your enemies into a land which you know not, for a fire is kindled in my anger which shall burn upon you. The people did not appreciate Jeremiah, the faithful prophet of God. They despised him because his straightforward preaching of God's word made them feel very uncomfortable in their sin, you see. And they were foolish because that straightforward preaching of the truth of God's word is the one thing that could have saved them from the misery that's going to come upon them and from the hell that followed them after they died. And yet they despised Jeremiah. Instead of treating Jeremiah, the faithful man of God, with respect, they treated him with contempt. And it was just like Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So the people will suffer at the hand of the enemy while that enemy will treat Jeremiah well because God will make sure that he takes care of the man who was faithful to him. It's hard to live for Jesus in today's world, and it gets harder all the time. And if you're truly living for Jesus and truly proclaiming the word of God, you're not going to be popular. You're not going to receive the accolades and the applause when you are faithful to God in this world. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. Jesus said, all who live godly lives in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So it's not just those who preach the truth. If you're not being persecuted as a Christian, you're not living for Jesus. And you may suffer as God's obedient servant, but in the end, things are going to be good for you. 15. <clears throat> oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and avenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in your long suffering. Know that for your sake I have suffered rebuke. Jeremiah is praying to God. He's saying, Lord, you know what I'm going through. You know what I have gone through. And I have been faithful. Of course, God knows. 16, your words were found and I did eat them, Jeremiah says. And your word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. When you love the word of God and you take it in, then it is such a joy to feed your soul with that word, which is what Jeremiah did. If you love Jesus, then the word of God is going to be the joy of your heart, the pure word of God, not watered down, the pure word of God. That's not for lukewarm modern-day evangelicals who want their ears tickled and want to be entertained. Oh, they can't stand it, the pure word of God given out straight. They scoff at it, and so do the preachers. Snicker, snicker, giggle, giggle. Hmm. This is what the Word of God says. Yeah, snicker, snicker. I've seen it so many times. Makes me sick.
And you know, the places where lukewarm Christians can get what they want are a dime a dozen in this country. And they were the same thing. It was the same thing in Jeremiah's day in Israel. Or old Jeremiah, he was the exception. He loved God's word. 17. I sat not in the assembly of mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of your hand, for you have filled me with indignation. Jeremiah says that he was ostracized because he was not like everyone else. And you know, that was a feather in his cap. Jeremiah sat alone because he stood for truth. No one liked him. 18. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuses to be healed? Will you be altogether unto me as a deceitful brook and as waters that fail? Jeremiah asked God if he's going to be faithful to him, if he's going to help him. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, then will I bring you again, and you shall stand before me. And if you take forth the precious from the vial, you shall be as my mouth. Let them return unto you, but return not you unto them. Oh, good stuff here. In other words, God tells Jeremiah not to compromise in order to be liked by lukewarm Christians, as it were, or people who don't care about God, or those who are only Christians in name. Don't compromise to be like them, Jeremiah. Don't return to them. Let them return to me. Stay close to me, Jeremiah. And if those people want to come to you, let them come to me. But don't you compromise to get along with them. 20. And I will make you unto this people a fortified bronze wall, and they shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you to save you and to deliver you, says the Lord. And I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem you out of the hand of the terrible. God tells Jeremiah that those people are going to give him a hard time. Jeremiah was not enjoying his job, <laughs> not at all. The only thing that gave him comfort was that he knew he was being faithful to God. Jeremiah did not enjoy his work, the work that God called him to do, uh-uh. But he sure did enjoy fellowship with God in the Word, and that sustained him. And God told Jeremiah, keep trusting me, carry on, don't quit, and he'll be blessed in the end. The Bible says that if we don't grow weary in well-doing, we will be blessed, we will be saved, and we will be blessed by Jesus. Study all of God's word with me at the Scripture Verse-by-Verse -verse website, and that's found at the Bible verse -by -verse com. Go there, choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through every single verse of the Bible. And when you take a break from studying with me, Go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That makes you a part of this ministry. And also pray for me, please. That makes you a part of this ministry as well. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.